Nico Rosberg was, in my opinion, good for Formula 1. He was a fantastic driver who could run with the best on the grid and bring the fight to Lewis Hamilton and battle for world championship glory. But let's go back to the beginning. Nico Rosberg was born on the 27th of June 1985 in Wiesbaden, West Germany. He is the son of 1982 world champion Keki Rosberg and Sina Rosberg. Nico holds a dual citizenship with Finland and Germany because his father Keki is Finnish and his mother is German. Nico competed with the Finnish racing license until the end of his first Formula 3 Euro Series season where he would switch to a German license in order to obtain major sponsorships more easily. After the first four weeks of Nico Rosberg's life, he would live in between Monaco and the Spanish island of Ibiza. Nico was educated at the International School of Nice and the International School of Monaco where he was encouraged to pursue sports. Nico was a fast learner and was taught five languages, English, French, German, Italian and Spanish. At just four years old, Nico was would have his first experience when his father took him to a go-kart track in Ibiza. Nico would steer a jeep while his father Keki controlled the pedals. Nico began competitive racing when he was just six years old and had a big goal of becoming a Formula One driver. Nico's parents were supportive as long as his grades at school were all good and eventually Keki would be managing Nico's career. In 1996, Nico won the Cote d'Azur Mini Kart Regional Championship, Trophy Jerome Bernard and the Trophy de France in 1997. At just 12 years old, Nico was the youngest champion of a French national karting series. He went on to finish second in two more championships that year and progressed to the European Karting Championships a year later, where he would move to Italy in order to compete in international events. Nico would race for a team called CRG, and in 1999, his father Keki asked CRG executive Dino Chiesa to start a second team for Nico and Lewis Hamilton. This would later become MBM, Mercedes Benz McLaren, in 2000. Let's fast forward to when Nico was 16 years old. He competed in three races for the 2001 Formula BMW Junior Cup where he finished 18th in the championship with 38 points. But in his first full season, he drove for Viva Racing in the 2002 Formula BMW ADAC Championship. Nico won the driver's title, scoring 9 victories in 20 races and accumulating 264 points. Nico was awarded with driving a Williams FW24 at a test in Catalonia on the 3rd of December 2002. This made him the youngest person to ever drive a Formula 1 car at the time. The next year, Nico progressed to the Formula 3 Euro Series with Team Rosberg. He managed one race win and five podiums, finishing eighth in the Drivers' Championship. Later on, in November 2003, Nico was given the opportunity to test a Formula 3000 car at Jerez to prepare him for future Formula 1 tests with Williams. He would do two more tests for Williams in a modified FW25 at Catalonia in December and January 2004. He remained at Team Rosberg for the 2004 Formula 3 Euro Euro season where he would win three races but finish fourth in the Drivers' Championship. During the off-season, Nico was accepted into Imperial College London, a university where many Formula One designers studied aeronautical engineering. Nico would actually turn this down to focus purely on his racing career. It's 2005, it's now time for Nico to drive in GP2. His preference was to drive for BCN after its results in the 2004 International Formula 3000 Championship, but Nico was persuaded to drive for ART Grand Prix. Nico would win his first GP2 race at Magni Corps and then won a feature event at Silverstone and the Hockenheim Ring. He won both season-ending races in Bahrain and went on to win the GP2 championship with 120 points. It's now April 2005. Nico was signed by Williams Formula 1 team as a second test driver. Nico almost got his chance at two race weekends after Nick Heidfeld was injured, but the team opted for reserve driver Antonio Pizzonia. They didn't want to run the risk of delaying Nico's career by one or two years if he had performed poorly. When 2006 came along, it was Bernie who told Frank Williams that signing Rosberg would be an advantage. He was young and very smart. He was able to give detailed information to his engineers. Before the season began, Nico achieved the highest score ever in the Williams Engineering Aptitude Test, which tests a driver's knowledge of car mechanics and engineering aspects. At the season opener in Bahrain, Nico finished in 7th place, scoring his first points and set the fastest lap, which at that time made him the youngest driver in history to do so. A a week later in Malaysia, he started third but retired after an engine issue just seven laps into the race. He scored points once more at the European Grand Prix, finishing seventh again. Nico faced some reliability issues throughout the season and finished 17th in the driver's standings. 2007 was a better year. Nico had a much more reliable car and finished ninth in the driver's championship. Nico's reputation was on the rise and many different teams were interested in him for 2008. McLaren had shortlisted Nico as a replacement for Fernando Alonso and even approached Williams to work out an 
an offer. Frank Williams quickly rejected this offer and extended Nico's contract until the end of 2009. Nico told Williams he would remain with the team for as long as they provide him with a competitive car. Nico began the 2008 season with a third place finish in Australia, which was his first podium finish in Formula 1. His year started to fall apart due to the Williams car not being competitive and was sometimes outperformed by his new teammate, Kazuki Nakajima. In 2009, Nico lost 5% of his body weight in order to compensate for the introduction of Curse, which increased the car's minimum weight limit to 605 kilos. Nico had early success because the 2009 car featured a double diffuser, but Williams would not keep up with the development throughout the season. From mid to late 2009, the possibility of Nico Rosberg driving for Mercedes in the 2010 season was being discussed depending on whether Mercedes could acquire Braun GP, but eventually Nico announced his departure from Williams at the conclusion of the 2009 season. Nico was released from his Williams contract on the 1st of January 2010, and one week later, Mercedes purchased 75% of Braun GP. Nico was set to partner seven-time world champion Michael Schumacher for the 2010 season. Throughout the season, Nico would finish races higher than where he would qualify, and would do so against Michael 15 times. After the 2010 season, Nico was known as a consistent driver, with some serious pace. Nico would get his first win at the 2012 Chinese Grand Prix, and in 2013, he would partner his old friend from karting, Lewis Hamilton. In 2014, when new regulations were introduced, Mercedes were clearly the best. This is kind of where the Rosberg-Hamilton drama started. They would have plenty of battles, a lot of them pretty friendly, and really good to watch. And then other times where they'd come together, with the 2014 Belgian Grand Prix really being one that stands out and stays in our memory. Nico hit me. Nico hit me. That's not cool, guys. 2016 is where it hits just a new level. 2016 was one of the most motivated versions of Nico Rosberg we ever saw. Nico stopped reading the news. He studied sleep with a jet lag doctor and put all of his focus into his family and winning races. He modified his racing gloves to help him improve his starts and removed paint from his helmet in order to make it 80 grams lighter. He avoided Facebook for five months, studied philosophy and meditated so that he could stay concentrated. He worked with a sports psychologist psychologist up to eight hours per week with two hours of mental discipline every two days. Nico was also in close contact with his mechanics and was getting detailed technical input from them at the team headquarters in England. Nico won the first four races and led Lewis Hamilton by 43 points. Then they collided in Spain which made headlines and had the team contemplating their lineup. We then saw Lewis take the championship lead over the next eight races. When the mid-season break arrived, Nico changed his diet and lost one kilo of muscle in both legs after refraining from cycling. Nico went on to win in Spa, Singapore and Japan. Going into the final race of the season in Abu Dhabi, Nico led his rival Lewis by 12 points and in order to win the title, Nico had to finish low lower than third. After attempts by Lewis to back Nico into the pack with chasing drivers right behind him, Nico managed to withstand the massive pressure and won the world championship by five points. Nico Rosberg was an extremely talented F1 driver. He was extremely analytical about everything. His talent was clear from a young age. He became someone that many F1 teams were considering to drive their cars. He was just so technical. He would analyze every racetrack with extreme precision and had an incredible ability to make changes to his car while also adapting his driving style to those changes. I love drivers who go about it with an extremely analytical approach and it reminds me of what drivers are capable of in these ferocious racing cars. Nico Rosberg announced his retirement at the 2016 FIA prize giving ceremony. It was a bit of a shock, sent the internet wild and had people wondering who is going to step in at Mercedes. The truth was, Nico won what he wanted to win. He achieved his biggest life goal. It was time for him to settle down with his wife Vivian and his two children, kick back and enjoy life. You can still see Nico in the paddock, on Sky F1 as a pundit, and on his YouTube channel of course. He was one of F1's most methodical drivers. An elegant racer who just had an unbelievable eye for the track. A natural and someone who beat Lewis Hamilton in equal machinery.